Welcome back and uh, thanks for staying with me on Sunrise. I've got a young author. He's all of 12 years old. He finished this book in February, he tells me. It's fresh off the press. It's going to be launched today at the International Press Center in Accra, 3 p.m. to be precise. Now, the guest of honor and the special guest speaker is the president of the Ghana Association of Writers, Mr. Kwesi Jana Pinting. And to prove it, I've got the invite right here. Well, this one is not for me. It's for the producer. But I'm sure if you love children's literature, you will show up and you will be warmly invited. Daniel, congratulations. Welcome to Sunrise. And... Um, First off, uh, I have to tell you that I really love reading. I've loved reading since I was, I think, three years old or something. So, but I've, I've not written anything, so I'm full of admiration for you. I think you know, you've really done much better than almost everyone that I know. In fact, everyone that I know. But in spite of all of that, I just you know, struggle to read your book. That's, that, that's the sad news. The happy news is that my son, who is 10 years old, he loved it. And uh, I can't get him to read. I bought him boxes of books. I bought him a Kindle. But to get him to read a book is something else. Your book, I think he loved it more than TV and PlayStation put together. <laughs> and I want to know what the secret is. What did you put in this book? There is no secret. I just write for writing. I like to write. so I just You like write. to write? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, my name is Eric. If you call me sir, I'll call you boss or something else. Okay, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we cool with that? Yes, Eric. Yes, Eric. Okay. <laughs> I see that you're very, very polite. Is this how you always speak? Yes, Eric. <laughs> yes, Eric. Okay, you can just say, you can just say yes. Tell me, uh, I couldn't uh, get through to the end of the book because I couldn't get back into my like, sort of 12-year-old mind mode. But I was glad to read that there's a nice man in there that's also called Eric, and he's a toy maker. How does, how does the story end? The story ends kind of abruptly, not really. But it, there's a cliffhanger at the end, so I'm not going to reveal it yet. Oh, I see. You're quite a professional writer already. And this is, uh, it says, is the, is the first in the Cat's Cave trilogy. So there's part one, two, and three. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, when did you start writing and why? I started writing when I was about four years old. My grandmother helped me. I was writing essays. Then I started writing short stories. And a family friend found them and he's like oh this would make a good book and that became my first book Daniel's Tales and since then you've been writing and writing and writing and writing do you have any time left for other stuff you know like reading or, or playing or or studying oh yes I set a time for writing then I set a time for everything else okay I would suppose that when you were four years old your your first essays were written in pencil or pen on paper is that how you still write? Oh, no. I use the computer now. <laughs> you use the computer? You type yourself? Yes, sir. What's your typing speed, yes, boss? Yes, <laughs> My typing speed, I don't know. You don't know? Okay, but like how many pages can you type up in a day? In a day? It just depends how long I'm on the computer. But sometimes I can do up to like seven, eight, nine, ten pages. There's another thing that I noticed, you know, when I started reading your book is that some of the some of the situations that you described, they're not like twelve year old situations. You're talking about, you know, family situations and, you know, parents and babysitters. Where do you get the ideas for the things you put in your books, the well, stories? I try to make the stories relatable to something that everyone can relate to. It has to be relatable or else not that many people would enjoy it because it is not suitable for an, one audience. Okay, so what is the audience for this book? Please tell me that it's meant for, you know, 10 to 12-year-olds, and then I'd feel somehow better. Yes, it's made for 10 to 12-year-olds. <laughs> okay, now you made me feel better. Tell me the truth. Who is it really made for? 10 to 12-year-olds. 10 to 12-year-olds. Okay, are you thinking about 10 to 12-year-old boys or girls? Um, it doesn't really matter. If they like the book, then they like the book. If they like the book, they like the book. So do you think about uh, your readers when you are writing your books, or do you just you know, think about yourself and what you are fascinated or interested in at that particular time? I guess I think about myself, because I just, I just sit down, I've thought about it for a little bit, then I just start to write. I think what a little bit about the readers, but then I just start to write and see if they like it. What do your friends think about your writing, you being a writer? My friends are, they're excited. They're excited? They, they want my autograph now. 
or they want your autograph in the books. Have you inspired anyone else to write? Um, some friends, yeah. They inspired to write from me. So you're famous now? I guess. Yeah, you guess. You are. If people are asking for your autograph, then you're famous. Okay. How do you handle that? Uh, fame comes with responsibility, so just be responsible and What stay. kind of responsibility? I know there's corporate social responsibility. I didn't know there was famous person responsibility. <laughs> well, what's famous person responsibility? Famous young writer responsibility? <laughs> Just stay focused and stay focused. Keep, hum keep yourself humble. Stay focused and keep yourself humble. Uh, how long did it take you to write this? This was actually my, um, the quickest I've ever written a book. It took me about a year to write this. As soon as I finished my second book, Tour and Other Stories, then I started working on Cat's Cave. It took you a year. Now, uh, it says here that you were born into a very nurturing family. Did your parents make you write that? Did my parents make <laughs> me write? Yeah, that, that your family is very nurturing. No. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Your family always supported you, like, you know, in writing. I'm, I'm sure they did. Always. Now, who wouldn't, wa who wouldn't want you know, to have a famous writer in the family? Now, this is, this is called Tor and Other Stories. Uh, so these are like little short stories. Yes, sir. And how old were you when you wrote this? Um, I was... 10, 11-ish when I wrote Torn Other Stories. I don't know why you keep calling me Sir. I mean, the guy in this book, the one that's called Eric, I don't think you thought of him as Sir Eric. <laughs> do I look like a Sir? I, I guess you do. What does a Sir look like? I mean, maybe maybe I might get knighted, you know, Sir Eric. It's not a bad idea. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, so tell me, you said it, it took you a year to write this, and you said that it's the first in a trilogy. There's going to be part two and part three. Yeah? Yes. When I started reading this book, I was looking for the Cat's Cave because it's called Cat's Cave. I must uh, say again that, you know, I didn't get uh, all the way through before I gave it to my son. So I want to find out, why did you call it the Cat's Cave? Because there was nothing about the Cat's Cave in the first part of the book. And I think I got to the part where uh, two children broke into a library to work on a film project and then they got uh, caught by the security guard, and then they had to rush back to school. I did pretty well, didn't I? Yes, yeah. but the thing is, you didn't even get far enough to know about Cat's Cave yet, so... Do you ever think of your books as, uh, as TV series or as movies? Actually, I do. You do? Sometimes, yes. You see, you see things in pictures and images, because I got a, a bit of a sense of, you know, watching a movie or television, when I was reading this book, it's written in a very pictorial manner. Yes, I like like seeing it in my head and then just writing it out. Has your style of writing changed since you wrote this and since you wrote that? Would you say that uh, generally the things that you're interested in and the way that you tell your stories are your writer's voice, that it has changed a lot? Not really. Maybe it's more mature with Cat's Cave, but, you know, because this one's for a younger audience, but... I don't think it's changed much, no. Do you think it will change as you grow older? Yes, it will definitely change when I grow older. Okay, are there things that you really look forward to writing about that you haven't yet written about? Um, sometimes, like, sometimes I'm in the mood, oh, why don't I write about this or that, but, you know, I like what I write. You like what you write. Um, you've got uh, the president of the Ghana Association of Writers here, Mr. Kwesi Jana Pinting. He's one of my favorite writers. How, what, what, how do you feel about you know, having uh, someone of his caliber, a writer of his caliber, who writes uh, on a regular basis to be your special guest speaker at the launch of your book? Wow. Wow. That's what I thought. I, I also thought, like, wow. <laughs> Has he read your book? I have no idea. Have you read anything by Kwesi Jana Pinting? Not yet, okay. Not yet. Well, uh, we should hook up afterwards. I'll, I'll show you where, where you can get some, uh, some stuff that is written. He's re he writes really, 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 really nicely. Do you, do, you live, uh, do you live in Ghana? No, sir. I live in the United States of America. Is everyone in the United States called sir? <laughs> um, my parents and my grandparents told me to respect my elders. So. Okay, okay. So it's a sign of respect when you say yes, sir, to somebody. Yes. Sir. So I, I can say yes, sir, to you as well? Yes. Sir. Sir. <laughs> I'm beginning to like you. Daniel, what, what are your plans for your future? Do you plan to be a writer all of your life? That's what I'm thinking about as of right now. 
Have you ever wanted to be anything else? Oh, yes. I change my mind constantly. But uh, yeah? Okay, you, tell, tell me about some of the changes. Because I wanted to be a sailor and sail off uh, on a ship when I was about your age. I wanted to, I, some time ago I wanted to be a brain surgeon, I wanted to be a journalist, I wanted to be a filmmaker. Wait, hold on, brain surgeon? You wanted to be a neurosurgeon, yes, a sir. journalist, and a filmmaker? Yes. Not all at once, though. <laughs> How long does it take for you to change your mind between wanting to be a brain surgeon, a journalist, and a filmmaker? I have no idea. What was the first thing you ever wanted to be? The first thing I ever wanted to be was a dentist. I don't know why. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. This, this, this is getting interesting. I have to write this down. Um, okay, so now we have four. We have dentist. We have... Uh, what was that the one? Journalist. Journalist. We have neurosurgeon, brain surgeon, and we have filmmaker. Then there's author. Five. How many in all? Ballpark, roughly. Rough estimate. Yeah, the five. Those five. Yes, sir. Which one do you think you'll end up actually being? All five or just one or two or three? Well, I think maybe either the journalist or the writer because in, it's in the same alley. And also, I've been writing for about half my life now, so it seems that's the path that's taking me. Just, uh, just you know, listening to you speak with me and watching, uh, watching you, uh, people are posting uh, things on, on our page on Facebook. See, this one here says, this guy is really amazing. <laughs> what do you think of that? Wow, wow. that's uh, from Call Me Lexis Kilo. It says, wow. That's a big wow. It says, this guy's really amazing. No, really, look, you can read it for yourself. See, four minutes ago. Wow. wow. I mean, I don't think of myself too big, so. You don't think you're amazing? I just think I'm just, just another kid and that writes. That's the big difference. Are you sure? Yes. Because I'm getting the sense that uh, you're really pulling my leg. You're like, well, you know, I'm 12 years old and I look like a kid. I'm a kid, but really, <laughs> <laughs> I'm smarter than you. <laughs> You've got that thing about you. Yeah. And, you know, you write very, very well. Okay, um, Cyril Clips Morte says, Hi, Eric. Tell Daniel I would love to have one of his books. He thinks that you're really a genius. Now, that's, that's an upgrade from amazing. <laughs> wow. Wow. He thinks that you're a genius. He hasn't even seen your book except on TV. I don't know if he's read it. He says he would love to have one. How can he get one? Um, they're on Amazon. On Amazon. Yes. So you have to have an internet connection. And then you can download one. Or you can get one uh, shipped to you in the post. Um, yes, I believe you have to have an inter con internet connection. But we're trying to get it into bookstores. And okay, here's another person who thinks that you're a genius. And it's called Frederick Brown. He wants to know, are the books already out? You said the Amazon. So yes, they're out. Are they going to be available in Ghana? In Ghana, I believe so. You think so? I believe so, yes. Okay, are they going to be available as, uh, as free downloads online? I don't think so. You don't think so? Now, why not? Why not, Daniel? I don't really know. I don't pay attention to that kind of the marketing aspect. I just write the books and... You just write the books? Yes. So who takes care of the business side of things? Who takes care of, you know, printing them and... Uh, putting them out and selling them and uh, getting everything sorted. That is my mom. That my is mom your mom? and the publisher. Okay, if you had, uh, if, if I gave you the opportunity, which I'm giving you now, to send a shout out to anyone at all. Now, I know that you've got a really long list of acknowledgements here. It's a full list. Who would you start with and why? I would start with my grandpa, Angaji. He's the one who got this whole thing started and allowed me to be here today. Okay, and then who would you mention next? Well, obviously I thank God for this, you know, to, you know, it's only through him I could have done this. You write a lot more than you talk, you know that? I do? Yeah, I mean, you, you write, you wrote for a year. Do you think you could sit here and talk for a year? No. <laughs> you see? So you write a lot more than you speak. How, how much do you read? I read a lot. You read a lot? What do you like reading? Um, anything. Non-fiction, fiction, fiction like, I mean, wh Who are your favorite writers? What are your favorite themes? What do you really like reading? Um, I like... It really changes. I mean, I like C.S. Lewis, who wrote The Chronicles of Narnia. I like H.G. Wells, who wrote War of the Worlds. When I was younger... Science fiction? Yes. I love science fiction. 
Have you read any of the old school science fiction writers like Isaac Asimov, who wrote about robots and androids and things? No, but I want to start reading some of those. Yeah? Check it out. And what about Jules Verne? Jules Verne, I've heard of him. You've heard of him? Yes. He wrote some pretty cool stuff. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea Around the World in 80 Days. Back in the day, that was cutting-edge stuff, and it's still a great story. Listen, it's been great talking to you, Daniel. I wish you all the best. Have you started working on part two already? Yes. Part two is just now beginning. It's just now beginning. How long do you think it's going to take you to finish part two? Hopefully, around, roughly, around, roughly around the end of next year, part two should be out. You really take your time in writing these stories. So do they... Do they develop you know like bit by bit do you grow them sort of like you'd grow a flower or do you just see the whole thing it's like a jigsaw puzzle and you just start fitting it together how, how does the story come to you the book i think it's like a jigsaw puzzle i just like i've imagined the whole thing but there's some things i need to fix like would it work or would it not work so i see it and i just write it out and then the end product is the book do you do any research? Do you go looking for ideas or facts or situations somewhere? Oh, yes. You, I do, you do a lot of that? Yes. All right, cool. I think that this book would not just make a really nice uh, TV series or a movie. I think it would also make a great game for PSP or <laughs> Xbox. What do you prefer, by the way? Um, maybe a game. Would maybe be a game. Be the best as of right now. You think this Cat's Cave will make a great game, eh? Yes. I think so. I think it will make a fantastic game because it's like, you know... It's, it goes back and forth. So sometimes you tell the story, then you explain it. I really like that. Daniel, it's been nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. I recommend this book to anybody. And I think that uh, you should ask you know, your mom to make sure that it's available to every single child in Ghana. Because reading is really important. I love reading. And I think that everyone who is between the ages of 10 and 12 would love to read this book, Cat's Cave, by Daniel Kumi, 12-year-old writer. This is part of a trilogy. There will be part two and three. And if you really want to check his writing out, well, you can read this one as well. And it's called Tor and Other Stories. Daniel, once again, thank you very much for passing through. And I wish you all the best.